The Nosferatu hat arrived just before I was sitting down to record. The timing could not have been better. Well, that was not what I was expecting, but I loved it. <laughs> I've been looking forward to long legs for months now because it had what I consider to be the best marketing campaign for a horror movie in years. Those teasers were creepy as all hell with very vague imagery and esoteric text. It was great. I will say that having seen the movie, I think that there's going to be a bit of whiplash for people who got really invested in that marketing because this is quite a bit different from what I thought it was going to be, and I also think them using all of these quotes comparing Long Legs to Silence of the Lambs is going to do it a disservice because that sets certain expectations that might wind up hurting the experience for some people, and it would really suck if that happened because even though this wasn't quite the movie I was getting super excited about, it's easily one of my favorite movies of the year so far. Long Legs is written and directed by Oz Perkins, son of Norman Bates himself, Anthony Perkins. It stars Micah Monroe in the lead role as an FBI agent investigating a string of ritualistic murders as she hunts down the mysterious Long Legs, played by the one and only acid-taken, demon-slaying, grape-juice-drinking, diving expert, Nicolas Cage. I never misspelled anything! Not once, not one time! I'll basically get excited for anything with Nick Cage in it, and I've been so happy to see him be in a ton of really great movies over the last stretch of years. Don't you forget, the dude's an Oscar winner. You just need to give him crazy roles where he gets to be super weird, and you're in for a good time. And this is definitely that. Nick Cage is very much in his elements in this role. He's, he's a lot more on screen than I was expecting, and he's got some just bizarre moments that actually had the whole theater laughing, which I think was intentional. This is a dark movie, without a doubt, but while I don't know if I'll go as far as to say it's humorous, there's a lot of absurdity that's landing right in that spot where you're a mix of horrified by how creepy what you're watching is, but also just like laughing uncomfortably because it's so weird. It's very uncanny and it got a really strong reaction out of everyone. He is absolutely on fire in this role, that just doing all the bizarre things that make Nick Cage such a fun actor, and while I was initially surprised to hear that he was playing a dark serial killer, having seen how the character is handled, I can absolutely see why Nick Cage was chosen for the role, and I'm so glad that he was. The man will go to some weird places for the sake of a scene, and every time he's there, it's a treat. I was also glad to see Micah Monroe in the lead role as someone who absolutely adores It Follows. I'm always happy to see her pop up, although, I will say that I found her character a little flatter than I would have hoped. She, she's not bad in the role or anything like that, but we don't get a ton of range in her character. She's very just like, you know, monotone the whole time. She's quiet. It does play a part in the story and there are reasons for it. And there's also some interesting stuff with her backstory, but she feels pretty one note for the most part. So what was it that I was expecting going into Long Legs? From the trailers, I was thinking that this would be a slow burn, largely grounded, and really disturbing serial killer movie in the vein of Silence of the Lambs, but with an even darker tone to it. A lot of that is definitely present here, but it was the more absurd elements that I wasn't expecting, and especially just with how much more this went into the supernatural. Now, it's obvious from the trailers that this is a cult story, but it definitely leans more into the supernatural side of that than I had anticipated. And while it was a bit jarring because of what I thought I was getting into, once I just like wiped away any preconceived notions and took the movie for what it was, I was all on board with the direction they took here. This is a really cool, winding, twisting ride of creepy occultism, mysticism, crime investigation, and a trippy horror show, and it's all executed brilliantly. For one, the movie is absolutely gorgeous. Cinematographer Andres Arochi gives this uh, really like slow, crawling look to everything with long, steady, smooth shots that sometimes linger a bit longer than you're expecting as you're invited to investigate every frame of the image looking for some hint or, or something standing in a shadow. And while there isn't always something there, sometimes there is. And once you notice it, it's bone chilling. A lot of this is shot on wide angle lenses and left very open, which is a huge plus because the set design and locations are incredible. And this gives a really strong sense of space, but it also, again, makes you feel like there's often so much room in the frame that you're sure something is being obscured or hidden somewhere. One of my favorite things about the visuals, Nighttime actually looks like nighttime. When it's dark and hard for the characters to see, you're having the exact same issues, and that's used to build some super tense scenes that do not do you the courtesy of relieving tension. 
It's a slow burn, and these scenes will just steadily build a sense of dread and complete lack of safety to the point that if you, if you have butt cheeks, they're going to be nothing but muscle by the time you walk out of the theater. I was on the edge of my seat through a lot of the first act in particular before we have much of an idea of anything going on, with one scene specifically really going all in with the tension. There is such a strong atmosphere to this movie, and it leans into a lot of the southern gothic aesthetic, so if that's something you're into, I, I think you're going to have a, a lot of eye candy to munch on here. These wide, dark landscapes with open fields and old churches, or stretching highways in the woods where you can't see a damn thing outside the headlights, there's a really great sense of looming dread that's largely thanks to the presentation of the locations. I was constantly admiring just how good the movie looks, and then on top of that, the score from Zilji, which apparently may be a pseudonym for Osgood's brother Elvis, Perkins, talk about being named after two legends, the spooks run in the family, I guess. The score is another huge help in building that looming atmosphere. It's very ambient and slow moving, really complementing the uncanny feel of Long Legs himself. There weren't any tracks that like stuck in my head or anything, but it's just the overall tone of the music that really tied it all together. Narratively, this thing is cool taken some twists that I was not expecting. It, it's quite good at seemingly knowing what you think is going to happen and then going in a different direction with it, but not in a way where it feels like the point was to mislead, but that it was written with the knowledge that audiences have an idea of how things like this tend to play out and wanted to keep you on your toes. While I didn't find Micah's character to be the most engaging protagonist, some of her backstory was so interesting to see unveiled, and once you have an idea of some of these connections, it recontextualizes certain certain narrative elements and ties the movie's story together really well. There was a point towards the end of the second act where the movie starts to get way more cerebral and supernatural than I was expecting, and I thought it was losing me, but once that third act began and all the pieces fell into place, I was right back in with a big grin on my face. I love being caught off guard like this, and it made me reconsider everything that had happened up to that point and appreciate it all in a new light. It was actually really cool because I was already loving the movie as something other than what it wound up being, so once reveals started happening, I found I was re-loving things that had already happened from a new perspective. That's a damn impressive thing to do, to make me admire the same element in two different ways. Without giving anything away, the climax of this movie had chills running down the back of my neck for about 10 minutes straight, and I'm pretty sure I was just beaming th through the whole thing. It's really cool. The opening scene as well, by the way, chilling. It's so good. It's not as disturbing as I was thinking it was going to be, and honestly, not all that violent, save for one or two moments that amp things up a bit, but with the way people were talking about how disturbing this was, I was definitely expecting something further, I'd say this is more like creepy and unsettling than it is necessarily disturbing, which just to be clear, isn't a knock against it or anything because it does those things very well. This movie is creepy as shit with some wild and really cool culty twists in there that I really enjoyed. There are some very out there concepts in terms of some of the reveals in the narrative, but once they settled in and had a bit more context, it all felt very natural and fitting in the overall story that was being told. This movie rocks, and in ways that I wasn't expecting it to at all. I was expecting to leave the theater disturbed, but I was actually just in a fantastic mood as I tried to process this bizarre movie and talk about it with the people I went with, as we all just made expressions at each other that summed up how we felt better than words ever can. It's a unique movie that's strange and creepy and dark and ominous and uncanny, and I loved it. It's so beautifully shot, the soundscape is incredible, the story is interesting, and Nick Cage is an absolute thrill to watch in this strange role that is so perfectly suited for him. I'm gonna go see it again because I think it's gonna rewatch extremely well since there's uh, so much recontextualization and, I mean, this one's getting added to the Blu-ray collection without a doubt. I was very, very pleased with Long Legs in ways that really surprised me, and it made me very glad to see a theater sold out for a weird horror movie like this, and this kind of thing is why I will always push back against people saying that every new movie is like formulaic, corporate, unoriginal dreck. There's tons of awesome and creative horror coming out right now, and this is one that I think every horror fan should go out and support. It's great, and I was thinking about it constantly all through last night and into today, and I'm sure I will continue to think it over because there's, there's so much to chew on with it. All right, we've been in a bit of a franchise rut lately covering A Quiet Place and the X Trilogy, but I'm trying to redirect now and get back on track with the kinds of videos that I love making the most. And next up, I'll be taking a look at Mike Flanagan's Hush. 
Until then, thank you for stopping by Rockland Graves. I hope you've enjoyed your stay.